Welcome to episode 2 of Quiedan by Lafcadio Hearn. This episode is called Ricky Baca. His name was Ricky, signifying strength, but the people called him Ricky the Simple or Ricky the Fool, Ricky Baca, because he had been born into perpetual childhood. For the same reason they were kind to him, even when he set a house on fire by putting a lighted match to a mosquito curtain and clapped his hands for joy to see the blaze. At sixteen years he was a tall, strong lad, but in mind he remained always at the happy age of two and therefore continued to play with very small children. The bigger children of the neighbourhood, from four to seven years old, did not care to play with him, because he could not learn their songs and games. His favourite toy was a broomstick, which he used as a hobby horse, and for hours at a time he would ride on that broomstick up and down the slope in front of my house, with amazing peals of laughter. But at last he became troublesome by reason of his noise, and I had to tell him that he must find another playground. He bowed submissively and then went off, sorrowfully trailing his broomstick behind him. Gentle at all times, and perfectly harmless if allowed no chance to play with fire, he seldom gave anybody cause for complaint. His relation to the life of our street was scarcely more than that of a dog or a chicken. And when he finally disappeared, I did not miss him. Months and months passed by before anything happened to remind me of Ricky. What has become of Ricky? I then asked the old woodcutter, who supplies our neighbourhood with fuel. I remembered that Ricky had often helped him to carry his bundles. Ricky Backer, answered the old man. Ah, Ricky is dead, poor fellow. Yes, he died nearly a year ago, very suddenly. The doctor said that he had some disease of the brain, and there is a strange story now about that poor Ricky. When Ricky died, his mother wrote his name, Ricky Backer, in the palm of his left hand, putting Ricky in the Chinese character and Backer in Kana, and she repeated many prayers for him, prayers that he might be reborn into some more happy condition. Now, about three months ago, in the honourable residence of Nanigashi-sama, in Kochimachi, a boy was born with characters on the palm of his left hand, and the characters were quite plain to read Ricky Baka. So the people of that house knew that the birth must have happened in answer to somebody's prayer, and they caused inquiry to be made everywhere. At last, a vegetable seller brought word to them that there used to be a simple lad called Ricky Baka living in the Ushigome quarter and that he had died during the last autumn and they sent two manservants to look for the mother of Ricky. These servants found the mother of Ricky and told her what had happened and she was glad exceedingly for that Nanigashi house is very rich and a famous house but the servants said that the family of Nanigashi-sama were very angry about the word Baka on the child's hand. And where is your Ricky buried? the servants asked. He's buried in the cemetery of Zendoji, she told them. Please give us some of the clay of his grave, they requested. So she went with them to the temple Zendoji and showed them Ricky's grave, and they took some of the grave clay away with them, Wrapped up in a feroshiki, they gave Ricky's mother some money, ten yen. And what did they want with that clay, I inquired. Well, the old man answered, you know that it would not do to let the child grow up with that name on his hand, and there is no other means of removing characters that come in that way upon the body of a child. You must rub the skin with clay taken from the grave of the body of the former birth.
Thank you for joining me for my narration of Lafcadio Hearn's Quidan Ghost Stories. I hope you can join me for more episodes. Please subscribe and rate my podcast. And if you enjoyed the content, please support me on Patreon. I look forward to you joining me again. Thank you very much. Thank you.